<clears throat> Hello guys, please do let me know if you can hear me. If you can hear me, just you know, wave to the camera or you know, do a wave emoji, thumbs up, whatever emoji they are supposed to use. Okay, I'll try and bring some people on the camera. Yeah. So my name is Femi Greater Heights. I am the founder of TalkTech Africa. And, um, you know, TalkTech started, I'll say the idea, I've had the idea, you know, over time. Um, and I have my good friend here, who is a software developer. Hi, Paul, hey, what's up? How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm on the moon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we are talking tech, right? Um, just to catch up on the tech ecosystem and all. What have you been up to? Ah, been up to a lot of things. You know, uh, late last year, I I joined. Uh, let me see the insurance sector. Oh, wow. I, so yeah, looking at how to how to change the narrative with insurance. You know. Okay. Uh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So, uh, it's good to have you. Don't worry. I would, I'll have to drop you so that I can just continue the introduction. Thanks, right. Paul. Thank you. Right. So, guys, uh, Talk Tech Africa, right? We are trying to uh, look at the narratives and what we are supposed to do so far. Um, yeah, the basic thing is that this was supposed to go on, on YouTube. Um, but we're having a bit of technical difficulty on YouTube, so we're just having it here. Uh, TalkTech started in 2019. The idea was already in my own head since like 2021, uh, since 2016, I beg your pardon. Um, most of the things that, you know, we are trying trying to run with today is the things that we've, you know, we've had in mind to do for a long time. And, you know, I just figured out that, you know, I couldn't do it alone. In 2018 into 19, we decided to, okay, I was working in the media house and I said, okay, let's start, um, let's start um, tech on radio just to do it like differently. The idea was to like, you know, bring tech on the mainstream and do it better than how I have been seeing and hearing tech uh, done on radio. Uh, so we, you know, drafted something, spoke to the management then, and it was in, um, it was in, um, I was working at Empire Radio then, so we decided to look, okay, let's, let's um let's see how we can grow it i didn't even know this community has gotten to thirty thousand until the moderator said oh you know we are at thirty thousand let's see how we can say something about where we have come from and where we are going to the goal is to hit 50 million <laughs> i don't know how it's going to happen i'm a big dreamer right and um having to have a bit of I'm trying to like free up my time bit by bit and have time for a lot of things. The things we are doing in, you know, Tech Expo Africa, the things we are doing in Talk Tech Africa, very soon we'll be able to have time to, you know, synergize properly. Uh, but Talk Tech, right, the idea was to bring everybody um, from across Africa and see how we can, you know, look at tech for from a different perspective, speak tech in our language. So part of the idea is to actually have tech on the streets. You know, there are several ideas that we're supposed to bring on tech on the streets, where we go on the streets and see tech in Pidgin. We say tech in French, we say tech in Swahili, you know, 
and so on and so forth. Tech doesn't have to be complex. And I have done this over and over again to know that I've like I've been in tech space since I was, you know, 10. And okay, the idea is to like look at how tech can be simplified for the old and the young. So what, what have we been able to achieve in Talk Tech Africa? Yeah, we've been able to bring up people, you know, I have, have a lot of people that I can point to their success and say, okay they've gotten to where they are by the grace of God and also the support of the community. I've had people that have personally trained, right? People that I have personally mentored and people in this community that I'm also under their <laughs> mentoring. It's crazy, right? Right. So you have to, as a mentor, you have to, you know, uh remain inspired and so you can also pass that you know zeal of mentoring to other people and um so many things has happened in the past 2019 to this time is roughly um how many years five years or thereabouts and the world has changed immediately we started talk tech the following year was covid um then i looked at it okay let's have podcasts right somebody in this community said okay Femi, let's look at podcast and um, we went into podcasting on spotify and I, I would say we did you know pretty well you know having to to have sponsorship from octa fx we had sponsorship from um 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 UNICEF, yeah. So those were the two major, you know, sponsorship we had uh, in that time. Now we are currently on thirty thousand one hundred membership on this group. And what is the next phase? The next phase is actually participation. Now we may not have mentioned this, but moderators have changed, and admins have also shifted as well. And um, over time, we have looked at it that, okay, what can we do better as a group? What can we do better? What can we improve on? Um, what are the metrics of performance that we can use to measure how far TalkTech Africa is going? And, you know, we were like, okay, this is TalkTech Nigeria. Let us rebrand because TalkTech Nigeria was our previous name. And we said, okay, rebranding is not just the, the thing, but how well do we reconfigure the contents, what we approve on the group, and the entire thing that we'll be doing. Um, so we came up with Talk Tech Africa, which is TTAF. So TTAF has been trademarked, um, as already communicated on the group. Um, so we officially own a trademark on the TTAF. And if you go on YouTube now, you find out that we have we have a YouTube um, handle now. This YouTube handle was fused into a previous handle, the Tech in Real Time. And um, currently, that YouTube handle is called TTAF as well. So what's the way forward? The way forward is to raise one to raise one. And if you are looking at 15 million, uh, if I'm looking at impacting 50 million, obviously, I can raise one to raise one. So that means that's a ratio of one to two, and that means I am impacting 25 million people. That means you are impacting, you know, another one million. You are impacting another 10,000. And it, I get this thing a lot, and people say I'm not there yet to be able to inspire people. <laughs> It's very, very funny because you don't have to like have so much to inspire a lot of people. You just need to figure out a niche where you operate and do it very well. So I'll tell you a little bit of my story. I came from engineering background, you know, had flair for tech over the years and decided to like, you know, switch to cybersecurity in 2020. And currently, you know, I'm still ex um, accelerating and still growing in that field. 
I've met a lot of people, professionals, mentors, you know, professors, and the future is actually um, AI. <laughs> so the future is a lot of things. When you tell people that, oh, what's the future? Some people will say it's the metaverse. Some people will say it's crypto. Some people will say it's blockchain. Some will say it's um, AI and robotics. So, but I usually stay in between AI and robotics. Everything will be powered by the number of um, nodes <clears throat> we're able to train right now to be able to power the future robots. All robots will be properly trained. And all these AIs that you guys are doing right now, you're actually training that uh, model. You're you are training um, each of the systems. Either you're using BARDS, you're using Perplexity, you are using um, GPT, you are using co-pilots, whatever you are using, you are actually part of the training model. So this is bringing training to the mainstream. And um, hopefully in the, like, the nearest future, the um, robotic side of AI, that's AI being deployed in actual physical machines, for them to be able to carry out actions, have a bit of intelligence, that future is currently being trained by you and I. It's a good one and it's also a scary one. But what are the other future for Africa? And you know, a friend of mine was saying, why is Africa not doing what it needs to do? I beg to define most of the time, Africa has a lot of talent, um, but here is the problem. The ideas that most of the Gen Z's will come with now will have to be built on infrastructures. So the only thing uh, I would say, except governance, leadership, and those things are sometimes um, very, very, it's a long shot knowing how politics is in, 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 in Nigeria and Africa, is that those structures Structures need to be in place for things to scale. We cannot say this over and over again. Most of the brilliant ideas you see all over the world, they are from Africa. They are actually Africans powering this. Um, so what do we need? We need lights. See, this light does, should not blink. <laughs> that is a basic infrastructure. If you are running, let's say, I, I don't want to believe you run your entire data center on the grid, but let's say you are running basic businesses and they need to be on the grid, right? You need this light to be on. If, let's just say for starters, it's not 24 hours, let's have this light up and running for 23 hours. First infrastructure, power. Second infrastructure, speed. Like, crazy bandwidth, internet speeds, and the internet should not be capped. So when you put all of these ideas on these infrastructures, good roads, see, all, all these ideas of AI, it's not like they are not in Africa. All these, you know, brilliant ideas of mechanics, mechatronics, the need um, uh, to, to go into space, you know, to have space revolution, uh, to have a robotic era in Africa, we need power. Power, power is very important. Power, when I mean power, I mean electricity, high-speed internet. You need security. You know. Come to think of it, we have countries that are boasting of having data centers. Imagine if there was a Microsoft data center in Nigeria. Do you know how, how crazy that would be? Every country is looking at localization of data, but they can't do it country by country. So eventually for Africa, it will be localization of data in Africa. Let's say the entire Africa is saying to Facebook, we don't want our data outside of Africa. We want our data within Africa. Just the way the US will say, TikTok, we want our data in every citizen of the U.S. in residing in the U.S. must have their data reside in the data centers in the U.S. Those future would come when there will be data dominance. 
everybody would speak data localization. That feature is like almost at the back here now. Now what else? You know, countries now should look at security. When I mean security, physical, cyber, ETC has to be in place. When you put all these infrastructure together, there is no how Africa would not progress. There is no how Africa will not move forward. So there's a lot that actually needs to be done uh, in Africa. But can we say we have not achieved anything? The answer is no. We've achieved quite a lot, lot right, in Africa. It's just that sometimes the, 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 the bad things that is happening sort of tanks the good thing that is you know, looking like happening in Nigeria, happening in Africa, Zam Namibia, Ghana, Kenya, you know, Rwanda, Egypt, you know, South Africa. All these countries, they are doing amazingly well. Technologies are coming up day by day. You know, payment gateways, fintechs, um, agritech, you know, edtech, health tech, all of these things are coming up. But the, the infrastructures, ensure that these things are consistent and they are properly maintained. How often do you, how, you know, how much of your profits do you plow into, into uh, let's say, maintenance of generators? How much of your profit goes into um, paying taxes? How much of your profit goes into um, raw materials, especially if that raw material is not in your locality. When you put all of this together, you realize that Africa does not have a skill issue. I would always say this. We can adapt the technology for our use. Africa has infrastructure issues, mostly infrastructure. But then sometimes we'll tie infrastructure to, to governments. Yeah. yeah, because yeah, there's a role that the government will play. If you say, okay, the role government cannot play everything, but government should play key things. Security. Not all private persons can come on board and secure the entire space. This is what usually happens. Um, a private um, company can come today and secure an estate. But the estate is not the only element of security in a particular state or in a particular country. If you are saying that, you know, guys like MTN should be responsible for security, they should be responsible for roads, they should be responsible for street lights. My problem is that if Glue, let's say, for example, if Globalcom, MTN and the likes, if they are able to provide security for an entire state or an entire, you know, city, don't you have customers that come from other states? So security has to be holistic for it to fly. And you see investors, you say, oh, investors are not coming. All investors cannot go to Lagos. All investors cannot go to Abuja. All investors cannot go to Port Harcourt. They need to look inward into other states. What are they producing? If I am producing something in, say, um, um, I've, been to, I've been to Cairo, I've been to... Um, Cote d'Ivoire, right? I've been to um, other countries outside of Africa. The, the, the place where you are producing and the place where your raw materials are coming from, it has to be end-to-end. -end. At least in technology, you say end-to-end -end encryption, right? From the source straight down to the destination must be protected. Africa needs infrastructure it's not we don't have a skill problem i repeat we do not have a skill problem because if it was a skill problem an african cannot leave africa go to the uk become the best in medicine become the best in aeronautics become the best in all of these things there we actually have the propensity to be geniuses but all of those geniuses has to run on you know the right infrastructure and that is very important and that is one of the key things that we're looking into in you know talk tech africa to see how we can it's long term so i don't really believe in 
you must get something done in one month. I believe this community is a long-term community and we don't want the magic overnight, even though that makes a lot of sense. We want the magic over a long period of time. The magic that goes from my time into the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. Would Facebook be here in 20 years? I'm not sure. I'm not, I can't tell you that. I can say yes or no. Will it be here in the next 50 years? I can say yes or no. But the fact is that wherever this technology will move to, the community will move there because all of these platforms are enablers. Now, what will you be bringing on board? We intend to bring, you know, partners. Um, this year, <clears throat> I was looking at it that way. <clears throat> we are going to empower, you know, few persons in the community that are actually doing stuff, skills that we can see. Oh, what do you need? You need a laptop, then we empower you with a laptop. What do you need? Internet is an issue. I even think at this point, we need to have clusters of, you know, um, high speed internet, maybe a cluster in a city where you know you can go get stuff done and it doesn't need to like break the bank. Something of say, um, um, they just say something that could cost you 500 Egyptian pounds, you know, could be as low as 20 Egyptian pounds or something that costs as much as you know, um, 40,000 era can come down to like. You know, three thousand, one thousand, or two thousand error, as the case may be. So we need that, and you know, hopefully one day we'll have partners that can help set up these in the different parts of Africa. What else? We need repository of talents. We need repository of talents. I I reached out to somebody on this group that had a skill, and you know. And um, I was blown away by, so you have this skill, where have you been all this while? That's the question, like, you know, people do amazing stuff, I'd be like, where have you been all this while? And I believe that a lot of people like that have such skills in the um, talk tech community, talk tech Africa community and other communities as well. So we'll try as much as possible to see how we can bring talent into limelight. Um, other areas that we need to also improve on in talk tech Africa is that we need structured content. And I'm glad that at, as we speak, um, we have an official brand person for talk tech Africa. We have moderators. Um, I think Mosud should be on this um, call as well. We have moderators, we have um, admins as well. Everybody is working towards having structured content. Then interviews, I see that, you know, um, Emmanuel Danso is, you know, joined his life. Amazing guy, you know, Macaulay, um, Craig, amazing guys I know in, in Nigeria and, you know, some amazing people that I've met in my few travels outside of Africa and even outside of Nigeria, we can always have interview sessions. So part of the curated content that we have in the adjusted content schedule for Talk Tech Africa is to have guests, is to bring in uh, professionals to speak on emerging technologies, data breaches, um, career improvements, you know, you know, what do you need to do? Businesses like can go into not just businesses, but you know, having to have a cohort business, um, you know, a cohort of training materials that can improve the community. So I want everybody, if you have friends that need to jump on this group, they need to do that and do that at this early stage. I will say we are early stage, right? <laughs> We've not even got into 50K, right? But I'll say we are early stage. Um, Mosud can actually give um, or Masood <laughs> can actually give a breakdown of the content and what we are trying to do um, as well. So I'll see. Uh, um, okay, it, it's not connected here. It's not in the audience. 
Okay. Um, so what next are we looking at? We are looking at, you know, having to reward those that engage in the community. Now, this reward might not be like so big, but something that, that you know shows that we recognize what you are doing. And you know, already mentioned for those that just came in, we have a LinkedIn handle now, Talk Tech Africa, TTAF. Um, so you can go like, join um, on Talk Tech. And it, might, it would also be a way of referencing um, employers to uh, employees as well. Um, so down the line, right, we will be able to recommend talents to recruiters through LinkedIn. And that would, you know, further grow the community. I also mentioned that we have YouTube, right? Um, we have podcasts, but the podcast has been inactive in a while, but there'll be reboots very soon, maybe before the end of the year or by the close of 2024, there'll be a reboot of the podcast where we'll talk about all things tech and in-betweens, STEM, science, technology, uh, space exploration, you know, um, everything that's, that lies within um, STEM we would look into it. And also we need a lot of your support. Support comes by sharing ideas on the group. We know that we try as much as possible not to have a hundred posts approved in a day um, because we want people to be able to engage with, even if it is five posts that we are approving a day, let people be able to engage on those five posts. It's not the number at the end of the day, it's how effective your communication is. And uh, people say, oh, we have a group that is 30,000, but why don't we have comments in thousands? I say, some people on this group, they are not necessarily tech enthusiasts. They are hoping to become one. Some are already in one or they are on the journey to become one. Why some are, you know, we're already like there. We're already like doing stuff within our own respective sectors in tech. Uh, but there are people on the group that they are fascinated with tech. They don't want to be there or not there. They just want to be sure that they know what is happening in the world. What are the changes? You know, what are the upgrades, updates that is happening in the tech space? So those are the people that you might say, okay, they may not have time to comment. I don't believe that I should post a comment and I see 50, I, 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 post a, I make a post and I see 50 comments. It is not compulsory. We see the impressions of some of these posts. There are posts that we get up to 6,000 impressions, 7,000 impressions, but they just only have five comments. So don't always judge by comments. How far has this post traveled? How many people has it reached? Is how we get the, our own performance at the end of the day. And people are really doing well. People do engage. And we are now getting statistics from outside of, you know, of Nigeria more now. Um, in part of our timeline is to have a website. The domain has been purchased, talktech.africa uh, has been purchased. Like I said, Talk Tech Africa has been trademarked. TTAF has been trademarked. So there's a lot of things that will come on board. And truth be told, only those that participate can get the benefits. If I throw something on the group, my moderators will likely be the first set of people to, 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 to get that benefit. Then maybe the next set of people will now be those that are active, you know, commenting, making posts, and, you know, also engaging people's posts. People post problems. Okay, I don't want to use the word problems. People post challenges on the group. And you see people also coming on that group to assist them to resolve it. Um, so yes, um, we will try as much as possible to um, we'll try as much as possible to reward those that really engage. Um, it's a, a free for all community. We are not being paid. I would say the only time we got sponsorship, literally everything plowed into the podcast. 
we don't get sponsorship now, but we believe that those things are like part of results. When people start seeing the incredible stuff that you're doing in the community, they will always come and show support. From nowhere, we ranked as one of the tech, the best tech podcasts in Africa. In short, <laughs> for us to be recognized by Octa FX was one of the best things that happened to me in 2020, 2020 into 2021. Then I had a blog post that listed us as one of the best, you know, uh, uh, tech podcast in Nigeria. Was it Nigeria or in Africa? And, you know, excellence is excellence. Either you take excellence to Germany is excellence. The word is not spelled incorrectly when you travel <clears throat> or when you change location. Excellence is spelled excellence everywhere you go. Good is spelled good. You know, genius is spelled genius. Some of these things don't change. Um, so we'll try as much as possible to put excellence in what we do and i'm calling on you know if you have a skill you can manage the website you can manage our linkedin uh, you feel that you can do great stuff in the community we have over 500 members on on telegram but we wish telegram can go higher than that we become a support platform like i want us to even become support to corporations, not necessarily collecting money. Like, let's just be an army of people that support corporations in and outside of Nigeria. Um, so that is the the future I'm looking at for um, Top Tech Africa. We've done the ground work and we are doing more and more things that you don't even see. Like I said, people just woke up and saw that we have trademarks. We have, you know, we've rebranded. And people that came and like, oh, wow, well, this, this group is more sanitized now and all of that and all of that. Yes, we've done a lot of work. And when you have more exposure from outside of your locality, you see how things are done better. Um, so we want those that would manage our Telegram communities. We want those that would um, community. We want those that can manage our LinkedIn. Um, the moderators are a bit stretched, but... Um, and they're not being paid, funny enough. They're not being paid. Uh, but there is great gain. I'll tell you for free. There are things I cannot even see. I've got, I really, I just show results, right? I, I really don't see a lot of things, but I believe that very soon we will get the needed attention and growth that we, that we require. And maybe very soon have products of our own, you know, products of Top Tech Africa that we can actually sell to the public and make money and support more people. The, the goal is, is not to become rich from this community. The goal is to be, maybe to be rich in influence, but not the money. I have a career, right? I have, I have business, businesses, and you know, I lead teams, I, I manage teams, amazing teams. I consult for companies in and outside of Africa. Uh, what else? What do I do? Um, I I speak, I talk, I pray, <laughs> and I have fun in my own way. Maybe not the fun I have that comes online, but I have fun to do as a tech person. So yeah, I'm looking for an exciting future with you guys. And please, if you would like to like, you know, come on board to our social media handles to help manage some of these handles that would be great that would be great so the future the the past the present and the future where does this you know unite for talk tech um the the present is that we have dreams and the future is that these dreams will come to life there is no project that I've, that I've handled that I've not seen the light of the day. So all of these dreams will come. They may not come, you know, boom, like, you know, big bang, but they would all come to pass. And um, I want to appreciate all the admins. I have Timita here. I have moderators here. Um, I have Blessing. Evelyn joins. Evelyn, thanks. Um, Evelyn of Osma, thanks. 
So I have like a um, couple of people that are in this community doing amazing stuff. And I see that we should unite, and this is the best time. So 30,000, right? 30,100 members. We are heading to the next 1,000. We're heading to the next 10,000. Like, we're heading to the next 10,000 extra. That's 40,000. Then the next, then the next. Before you know, we're in 50,000. Before you know, we're in 100,000. Join now that is early. Like I'll say, the first founders, right? First founders, the first guys that start, the first guys that put their feet down, um, you guys will literally. So this is a very small word, right? In this community, your kids will be mentored. In this community, your kids will come and see the amazing stuff that you're doing. This community will have people mentor my own kids, right? I would also mentor your kids in the timeline of life. And if I don't, some other guys here will just be somebody that falls into your space. This year, I was able to get a few persons, you know, in close to the door. So I don't used to say I get people jobs. I'll say, oh, I got you to the door. Like, I helped you because now the job market is so strict that you need somebody to just say, oh, take your hand and say, okay, this guy can do this stuff and can do it well, right? So having to like recommend people for jobs totaling over 15 million era. Yeah, what am I saying? Yeah, yeah 15 million era, so far so good. Guys in Nigeria that are earning USD, they are there in Nigeria, any USD. No matter how crazy the country is, yeah, no matter how crazy Africa is, people are really earning a lot of money. So yeah, I, I we try as much as possible. If you have the skill, we'll take you to the door. You know, people can recommend you here. I see Manu has joined, Imana Kaede has joined. Recommend you, take you to the door. But if you stay in the room, how long you stay in the room, how long you remain valuable in that room is up to you. It's not up to me. You can always run back and say, okay, I need advice on something. How do we, you know, how do I go about this and all? And I'll share advice with you, right? But how do you remain in a room where somebody has spoken highly of you? Oh, you can go over and beyond. This person is a genius and they take you and you get to the door and you are doing this stuff and you are becoming amazing. The glory goes to you, not even to the person that recommends you, right? It only just tells you, if the person is a recruiter, it gives the person a kind of boost that, oh, this person it has a knack for hiring amazing talents. But at the end of the day, the glory goes to you doing this stuff and you getting the job done. Yeah, so we'll try as much as possible to recognize those doing amazing stuff and recommend where possible. This is not the time to say you must join tech. This is time to say you must use tech. <laughs> you don't need to come into any tech thing. See, the, the gifts that this our generation have is that I want to mention three. I'll say smartphone, I'll say internet. Okay, let me say four. I want to be Oliver Twist and I want to use four. Number one, I'll say blockchain. If you know how much people have made from crypto, which is just an arm of blockchain, you'll be surprised. Then um, AI. Now, we don't even read that much. If I have like a book of a thousand page, I just feed it to the AI and say, kindly, you know, sometimes they say you don't beg AI, right? Sometimes I tell AI kindly. <laughs> I tell AI, could you please summarize this? And the AI ends up summarizing it, and I get the whole idea of the book. I still get to read the book, though, but at that moment where I get to do stuff, I just use AI for that. You can subscribe for some of these things, uh, $20 per month, $15 per month, um, to get the premium. Now, the next is or was internet, and the last one was mobile communication. You see, these four areas are the best gifts given to the, the tail end of, of gen, gen X, then Gen Y, then Gen Z. Now imagine what Gen Z 
pro would look like because their time they are going into their time probably gates will be ready by then there'll be more stuff going on on the moon um um if you're following space exploration obviously people will start having offices in the moon very soon or on the international space station or gateway as the case may be um so yeah the next is gen gen z pro would see ai coming to the metaverse remember metaverse came and it's toned down a bit it did not die metaverse is coming hard it's coming our time but it will be mainly maybe yeah it might be perfected in our time though but they will come and not know what floppy disks looks like they will come and not know what flash drive looks like we came we saw okay i saw floppy disk i saw cd i saw cd disk compact disk i saw dvd i saw blu-ray blu-ray i saw hdd i saw ssd i saw flash drive now imagine the next generation coming and they are all cloud storage they don't even know what flash is they don't even know what compact disk is so look at these four things and ask yourself have you made money from having access to this for if you have not made money you are missing if you have not made money from the internet from mobile communication from ai and from what's the fourth one again blockchain then <laughs> there is something wrong with you sorry to say there is just something wrong with you i've made money from blockchain like so i'll be specific i made money from crypto like right i've made money from the internet i've made money from mobile communication I've said this story before. I was selling data with MTN. MTN, what do they call it then? Um, SME data bundle. In short, I became a very, very rich core member selling data. So sometimes that's to, that's um, uh, gratitude goes to MTN. They, MTN from one university don't know that they really enriched one young guy somewhere and the guy was able to you know live life comfortably you know i wasn't even bothered about how much the government was paying that's to tell you how much i was making so uh i've made money from from the internet generally i've made money from ai there are things you know <clears throat> if you're into branding then you realize that you can now use deploy AI to tell better stories. I won't say better stories. AI can tell the stories. They might not be emotional stories, but um, AI can help make sense of some of the core concepts in branding. So yeah, I mean, maybe I will host a class on what AI can do in branding. If you know, that's the next phase for you. That's like the next phase. I've not just had the time to you know, structure my training content that will come into this community. So the training content that will come into Talk Tech Africa will be for free. If you miss it, the next place you'll see it is in my company and you pay for that one. So everything I do within um, Talk Tech Africa, consulting, you know, um, telling people what next generation solutions look like, um, they would be for free. But here is the elephant in the room that everybody will ask me, what area of tech should I go into? I don't, I'm always emotional towards answering that question. I don't think it's a genuine question. I think most of the people that have asked me, they've asked me from a point of they are broke and they want money. Why some have asked me from a point of rave? I've just been hearing this thing. Me too, I want to do it. If you are coming into tech, tech is not like a phantom zone. Tech is a tool to better a process or to better whatever you are doing. So this is the advice I'll give you, right? Tech, you don't need to like leave where you are and come to tech. Bring tech to where you are. If you're an HR, just you know deploy tech. Look for the things that make your work easy. Now we have AI interviewers. I don't know if you guys have seen it now. There are now solutions that can interview um, candidates on your behalf. It's, so if it's a job that has not the ATS, some of you, you know the ATS that they use in screening your CV. I do not mean ATS. 
I mean an actual live AI that comes on the call, you are presenting, it watches your, your, your facial expressions, it throws the questions to you, you answer the questions. So for a job where you have maybe a very, very popular job, let's say a job that is thrown into Nigeria now, and, and you call the job maybe, call it something small, say marketing, and you see um, 5,000 people apply for that job. How do you want a physical HR person to keep in touch or to like go through, through 5,000? Number one is that you have to start using ATX, ATS reverse um, psychology to do your CVs. Um, then you have to start looking at, for HRs, right? You start looking at um, um, AIs that can do interviews for you. You can cut down that number from 5,000, say, ATS cuts down that number from 5,000 to say 1,000. Then AI interview cuts that number from 1,000 to say maybe 50. Then you can now have 50 to go through. That's just on the just from the HR side. Project management, the same thing. There are now AI that can give you reliable insights from data. Just feed it the data. What I'm saying, take your Excel sheet and feed it to Gemini. Feed it to perplexity. And some of you will be hearing perplexity for the first time. If you want a, an AI that helps correlate academic work, if you're into academic work a lot, you might want to try perplexity. It has this nice tune of researching and fine tuning whatever you send to it. Um, Chat GPT 4.0, yeah, it's also good. Um, if you're a student, you want to look at some of these solutions use it your lecturers are using it so there is a boundary to which you can use and not use but see the people that are teaching you are using it go and use it as well as a student go and use it to learn there is no there is no stopping it it is at a point now AI will get to a point that it's no longer cheating why because how is this fair Let, let's let's even use ethics and morality to judge this. You are trying to use your brain. A lecturer wants the results. And at the end of the day, those that used AI got 19 over 20. And you that try to use your brain, how do you justify your failure? Let's just say you got five over 20. Let's just say in one weird way, something just happened that you got five over 20. How do you justify your failure? How do you say that, oh, I tried so much to do this and, you know, my brain could not carry it. Everybody just judges you by the results. So start looking at AIs that will simplify your work. So that's what I'm saying. Bring tech to where you are. Don't, don't leave your project management. Just bring tech to it. Become the best project manager driven by technology. So that's why you say you hear things like, um, uh, project-driven technologies, project-driven technologies. Um, as a medical student, yes, as a programmer, I don't need to tell you this. You don't need to write complete coding again. There are systems that are now coding and they will write it for you for, they will write it for you for free. You know, all of these systems plugging into tons of code base. And we have not yet even seen Grok. If you are aware, Grok is the AI being worked on by Elon Musk. And currently, where the development has got into is that Grok can now create exact images of politicians. Uh, yeah, you, you might say it's, um, that's, um, that's weird, right? But it's still in the testing phase. Obviously, they would, they would, they would limit the extent to which it can go. But imagine Grok coming on board, then you have ChatGPT, um, then you have Bard, you know, all of these guys showing in things that makes the next work easy. And you are trying to like, you are trying to like, uh, what do you call it, be the smartest in the room. Yeah, down the line, I feel humanity would become very, very docile. Take my word for it, or take it with a grain of salt. Um, humanity in the next couple of 10, 15 years will become, would relegate the things that our brain can do easily. Like 
Oh, what is two times 16? You just say, what do you call it? Alexa, what is two times 16? That the brain will not do so much. So down the line, all this intelligence that we are pouring in would actually pour the intelligence into technology. And technology will help us <laughs> make decisions. Now, I don't know what that looks like for you. Uh, I don't use AI for everything. I try as much as possible to think things, you know, process it with my head, not ask Google all the time. Google, yes, for history, but I don't ask Google mathematical stuff when I can just like do it on my own and have a pattern for answering questions. Now, but if you are coming into tech, that's the, those are the type of people I want to talk to. If you are coming into tech now, what are you coming to solve first? Or what speaks more to you? Don't come because of the rave of it, because something will always rave better tomorrow. Today, it can be... Remember one time it was like, everybody wanted to do UI UX. And right now, UI UX is like the least thing in your brain right now. Why? Because um, if you feed your wireframe to some AI, they read the wireframe, convert it to the exact UI and go beyond that and even write the front end code for you. So things that rave today will not rave tomorrow. So look at it from point. If you stay in UI, do I want to stay here for five years? Do I want to stay here for 10 years? And if you're saying five years, what do you need to add to it? That's the problem. Most tech people don't understand value chain. It means that if you know HTML, you should know CSS. Then the value chain goes goes to JavaScript, then the value chain goes to either Django, the value chain goes to PHP. That value chain must be complete because if you are just on CS, HTML, for example, and a job comes, there's a whole tendency that that job may not even be an HTML problem. It might just be a CSS problem. It might just even be a debugging problem. Let me not even say you are writing from scratch. It might just be a debugging problem. So don't go by the rave. Look at it. In the next five years, do I want to be here? If I want to be here, what do I want to solve with it? So even when that thing goes out of rave, the problem you are solving is still a problem in the next five years. So let me give you an example. Somebody that developed a solution for, for teaching kids in the village, a solution that can teach kids in their languages. Now, I do not mean you have to come there. You mean like you said something in English and the child that is taking that system starts speaking to that LMS. And immediately the child speaking to that LMS, the LMS recognizes the language and reconstructs the entire course material to suit his language. Now, even if the concept of LMS dies in the future. Your the problem that you are solving is still a problem till there's no child in the village, which is almost not possible. Because based on the economics of how the the world is, the world was designed not to have equality. Is I don't know how to always say this. The world was designed to have poor people. It is constructed. Being poor is constructed. It's it was designed to be there to have checks and balances. So I don't want to say you will be poor, you will not be poor. Decide where you will be on the quadrants. But that it is designed like that. When people are spending too much, the government will say, we want to cut down on spending. What do you think? You, they don't want everybody to spend the same way, live the same way, talk the same way. That is when the flavors of life comes in. So that is a talk for another day. But there will always be people that need that solution to that problem. So you see what I'm saying? Don't go by the rave. Say that, okay, if I come into AI, now the AI that your friend is using to solve a problem might be AI to solve mathematics. But you come on board and you deploy AI. There's a guy that is using Yoruba to teach Excel. I don't know if you guys have been following him. He, he started on TikTok. He started using Excel to teach it's started using Yoruba to teach Excel. Imagine the ton of people that are coming from the background where they don't hear English so much. Do you know why some people don't take on 
five classes. <laughs> you know why some Nigerians, some Africans don't take on classes taught by white men, as in life classes taught by white men? Because a white man is likely to talk faster than how you are going to pick the English. So <laughs> while, it's, while the white man is solving the problem, you are still, you are still, uh, he has gone further to tell you is the solution, but you are struggling to understand the English. So that's why you see some people will take self-paced trainings. They will go and, you know, take self-paced trainings and um, they will be able to listen to it at their own pace. And even if they speak English, they know that, oh, this person's English is faster. Indians are faster to talk. If you go on YouTube, if you are looking for a problem, Problem, there's a chance that four out of ten YouTube handles you will see is Indians. Why is happening? Why not Africans? Why don't we have a lot of people doing YouTube and putting solutions to stuff? Start a YouTube and let it be Yoruba for Excel or Yoruba for AI or use Yoruba to use Yoruba to maybe teach biology, you know. Let me give you how that is working. And let me tell you who he's working for. If you have been following Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast, he has, you know, Beast Feastables. He has this Mr. Beast show that he does, that, you know, tens of millions. The guy, the guy has hacked YouTube algorithm. What that guy does is that if he's doing 20 million views in English, he will do almost the same 20 million in Spanish. He will do the same 20 million in French. It's not that he's doing them again. He just did English and people translate it to these languages. See, there is translation, there's money in translation. In short, I don't know what to say, but if you are very good in Yoruba and you want us to start something together, just buzz me. I really want to go into like translation, translation problem for Africa. So you can start it. I've told you, you can jump into it faster than I do. If yours is faster you, and you want to bring me as an investor, no problem. If I start it earlier than you and you can add a ton of value to it, I bring me as an investor. So there's a translation problem in Africa and I think AI can solve it. Uh, what else? Physical skills, right? Physical skills are changing. Um, I now see people now having, in Babin salons now have rechargeable clippers more than chargeable clippers. So they now have solar, you know. So let's not even go in the most big things. The smaller things are changing in the house. You know, people have technology-driven um, tools in their houses now. You know, people have Alexa improved, you know, a better phone. Whatever you have, make good use of it. That's why I said Africa does not have a skill problem. Africa has an infrastructure problem. And infrastructure, most of the time, we tie it to the government. And I say, I, I don't always exempt the government. Why? Because there is a change that the government can make at a large scale compared to, if you say only Dangote should come and make this change, only uh, Vusi Tembekwaya should come and make only that change. There is so much they can do. Do you know that you can work all your life and one government policy will ruin your entire destiny. So people don't know how powerful one government change can be. Like you're going in this direction and the government just does, just, just comes up with the policy. Either the policy is to, is to tackle their competitor or their, you know, their, uh, what do you call it, the, those in the opposition. They can do crazy stuff. You can set the policy to so just ruin one man in the opposition. When I mean one man, you can ruin one man. Your target is not the whole nation. You just do a policy to ruin one man. That's to tell you that when people say, oh, private people can come and fix all the problem, I said, yes, there is public-private partnerships that do very well. But there are change that the government can do in a wide scale. And they can do it through policies, consistent policies. They can do it through money. Do you know liquidity that the government has access to? No matter the money that you claim you have as private, can you have, can you, can you print money? <laughs> so, 
I know that you know that's also print money. That's inflation, right? Can you print money? Do you have the printing machine? Do you have the central bank at your back? So let's let's not delegate what the government is supposed to do to private. If the government wants um, fiber to run from the tail end of Sudan to the tail end of South Africa, the government, the entire government of Africa, maybe African Union, they can make that happen. If, if the entire African Union is saying that, oh, Facebook, we want our data to be localized in Africa, that means everybody accessing Facebook must access it from a data center in Africa. It is possible. If Nigerian is saying, if Nigerian government wants to run fiber from the north, from Kano to, to where, let's say Edo states, it is possible because they have the impact at scale. The impact at scale is what the government has over private. So let's not always examine the government. Let's not, let's not always get to a point where we, we say the government, this thing is not the government, it's not the government that can do everything. It's the government. The government can set systems in place, policies in place, uh, bills, acts that can drive this thing in a consistent manner. A private person today can be broke tomorrow and that is not consistent, but a government can be consistent over time if they want to. So, so these are some of the things that I feel, you know, Africa needs to look into. And, you know, I have, tried as much as possible to tell you where we are going to in talk tech you know africa and um, we'll try as much as possible to do the change we can do but when i do my change you do your change and everybody does their change it becomes a better world for all of us in africa so invite your friends from all over africa that there is a new wave that is coming to talk tech africa and we are trying to you know bring in as many people as possible do you know that nigeria is in the most craziest tech ecosystem in Africa. You know, I was in Cote d'Ivoire and I could barely find places, you know, that have tech communities. Now that's just Cote d'Ivoire as a country or Ivory Coast as the case may be. Then you go to Ghana, you know, you go to South Africa, you go to Rwanda, these guys are still coming up, but we need to unify our efforts and grow Africa. Africa, is where money is. So you see everybody fighting for Africa. Everybody wants Africa to be green compliant. There is something they are not telling you about Africa. So let's let's do better. Let's do better. If you have you know questions, you can DM me. You can if you have ideas, um, you can also DM me. You know, see how you can use the technology at this time to improve where you are. Don't live where you are. If your head is not carrying tech, bring tech to where you are. It's not compulsory you come and do cyber security. It's not compulsory you do programming. If you can, that's fine. You are part of those actually doing stuff. But that does not mean that you cannot be part of those using stuff. They are users of technology, they are creators of technology, and they are innovators. So find where you find your balance. You're, you can be using and make money more than a person creating. Some of you are using cracked Photoshop and cracked Corel Draw. Do you know how much you have made? I'm not saying you've made more than Photoshop, more than Adobe, right? But do you know how much you have made from cracking that software? Let's just be honest, right? Do you know how much you have made from using cracked softwares on Windows? Imagine you're using technology, you didn't make it. So imagine, you know, wherever you be, if you can use what is available to, you know, do what you, where you, Okay, do what you need to do and get to where you need to be. So my name is Femi Greta. I'm the founder of Talk Tech Africa. And on behalf of all the moderators and the admin, I'll try as much as possible to keep this consistently as possible. And now I think I'll be fired up in the next couple of <laughs> months. <laughs> so thank you. And we'll meet again some other time. Peace.